Welcome to section 2.3. Today we're going to continue to find volumes of solids of revolution, except today we're going to use a different formula, the shell formula. Now, last time we learned that the volume using washers is pi integral from a to b of big R squared minus little r squared, and it was dx or dy, depending on the axis of rotation. Today we have an equally vague formula. The basic format is 2 pi integral of radius times height. And every time we go around a horizontal axis, it will be a dy, and a vertical axis, it will be a dx. So it's going to switch from before. Now the radius and the height, what do those refer to? Let's come over here and look at this picture. If you're going around a vertical axis and you draw a small rectangle in the region, the radius refers to the distance from the center of the rectangle to the axis of rotation. So the center of the rectangle is at x comma y. If you're going around the y-axis, that's going to be x. The height refers to the height of the rectangle. If you're going around a horizontal axis, you're going to draw your rectangle lying down. The height is actually the width, and the radius is the distance from the center of the rectangle, which again is x, y, to the axis of rotation. So if that's the x-axis, that distance is y. All right, so this can be confusing. So let's just, on this page, practice identifying r and h for different axes of rotation, but not find any volumes. So I've got the same region graphed six times. It's bound by y equals 4x and y equals x cubed. So those two graphs intersect when x is 2 and when y is 8, all right? If we're going to go around the y-axis, since that's a vertical axis of rotation, we draw a rectangle standing up. Its height is the top curve minus the bottom curve, 4x minus x cubed. Its radius, that refers to the distance between the center of the rectangle and the axis of rotation. That distance is x. A and b are the limits of integration, those reflect where that region starts on the x-axis and where it ends. So those would be 0 and 2, respectively. Now suppose we want to go around x equal negative 1. Well, there are two things that haven't changed. The height of our rectangle has not changed. It's still 4x minus x cubed. a and b haven't changed. The region still goes from x equals 0 to x equals 2. What's changed is the radius. Now the radius is x plus 1. You're going an additional 1 unit. All right, now let's go around x equal 4. Again, two things don't change, the height and the limits of integration. What changes is the radius. The radius is going to be this distance here, which is the whole distance, 4, minus the distance from the center of the rectangle to the y-axis, which is x, so 4 minus x. All right, now let's go around some horizontal axes. When we go around a horizontal axis, we have to draw a rectangle lying down, and these, these will be setups with respect to y, so we need to solve each of these curves for, for x. This bottom one is x equal y to the one-third, and the top one is x equal y over four. So the height of the rectangle, again, it's the width, so y to the one-third minus y over four. Now that's not gonna change in these two pictures either, because we're still going around a horizontal axis of rotation, so you can just fill in the same height for both of these. Okay, back to this picture. The radius, that's the distance from the center of the rectangle to the axis of rotation, that's y. A and b reflect the values on the y-axis where this region starts and where it ends starts at 0, and the region ends at y equal 8. So 0 to 8, and that won't change for these two pictures either. a is 0 and b is 8. The radius for the second picture on the bottom row is now going to be this distance, which is y plus 2. And for the last picture, our radius is this distance, which is the whole distance 8, take away y. Okay, now let's do some volume setups. Let's do this problem two different ways. So the region is bound by y equals x squared, that's this curve, and y equals 2x, that's this curve. 
If you set y equal to y, you'll see that those two curves meet when x is 2, and when x is 2, y is 4. Now, if we're going to do this volume setup with, with washers, and we're going around the y-axis, since the y-axis is vertical, this will be an integral with respect to y, and shells will be with respect to x. So I need to solve these two curves for x in terms of y. So let me just erase this. The curve on the right is x equals root y, and this curve is x equals y over 2. So this is big R, the distance from the outside of the region to the y-axis, and this is little r. So big R is root y, and little r is y over 2. And so our volume, I want pi integral of big R squared minus little r squared. So big R squared is y, little r squared is y squared over 4, dy, and the limits of integration are the values of y for which I have this region. Those are 0 to 4. All right, now doing shells, I draw a little rectangle standing up. The height of that rectangle is the top curve minus the bottom, 2x minus x squared. The radius is the distance from the center of the rectangle to the y-axis, which is just the x-coordinate. And so now my volume is 2 pi integral. The limits on the integral are the values of x for which I have those rectangles. Those are now 0 to 2. And I want r times h, so 2x minus x squared times x. The order doesn't matter, r, h, or h, r. And so if we distribute, that's 2 pi integral 0 to 2 of 2x squared minus x cubed dx. Okay, now we're going to set up a shell integral for the volume of the solid, and the region is only in quadrant 1. The parabola intersects over here in quadrant 2 and 1, but we're just going to start our integral at 0, because this is the part of, this is the region we're going to revolve around the y-axis. So if I draw a rectangle in there, the height of my rectangle, this will be an integral with respect to x since I'm going around a vertical axis. The height of the rectangle is top curve minus bottom. The bottom curve is just the y-axis, the x-axis, so the height is negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. The radius is just x. So the volume will be 2 pi integral from 0 to somewhere, I'm going to need to find this value here with that, where that parabola intersects the x-axis, so we'll leave that off for a moment. And then r times h, I'll just distribute as I go, negative 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 6x dx. Now let's find that upper limit of integration. We need to take this curve here and find the x-intercepts. So I'm going to solve 0 equals negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. Now this will be easier to factor if I pull out a negative 2. x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now I can factor negative 2x minus 3 x plus 1. So this intersects at x equal negative 1, which we don't want and x equal 3. So that's the upper limit of integration. And this is a fairly easy integral to do at home. You can show the volume, if you're interested, is 45 pi. Okay, let's do another one, but this time we're going to actually find the volume. So we're going to take the region bound by y equals x, y equals 2 minus x, which looks something like that, and y equals 0, which is the x-axis, so this triangular region, and we're going to revolve it around the x-axis. So since that's a horizontal axis, and we're using shells, this is going to be with respect to y. So let me erase that picture and start again. Since this is an integral with respect to y, I need to solve each curve in terms of x. So this is x equal y, and this guy is x equal 2 minus y. And I'm going to draw my rectangle lying down. The height of the rectangle is the larger x minus the smaller. 2 minus y minus y is 2 minus 2y. 
the radius is simply y, all right? So the volume will be 2 pi integral. Now, those rectangles start when y is 0, and they end up here where these two curves intersect. So to find out where that is, I can set x equal to x. So x equals x, that's y equals 2 minus y. 2y is 2, so y is 1. So my limits are 0 to 1, and then I want r times h, and I'll distribute as I go. That's 2y minus 2y squared dy. Now if we integrate, we get 2 pi y squared minus 2 thirds y cubed between 0 and 1, which is 2 pi times a third, which is 2 pi over 3. Okay, so pause the video and practice setting up these two volume integrals, same region, make a different sketch for each one, one's around the y-axis, one's around the x-axis. Okay, so hopefully you did that. Here's my sketch. This is y equal x squared, x equal 4, and the x-axis. So that's the region, and I'm going to revolve around the y-axis first. And so when I roll around the y-axis, this will be an integral with respect to x. So I'm going to draw my rectangle standing up. The height of the rectangle is top curve minus bottom curve. That's x squared. The radius is just x, since I'm going around the y-axis. This is 4 right here. And so my volume will be 2 pi integral. I'm going to have those rectangles for x going from 0 to 4. Radius times height is x cubed dx. And that's the setup. Okay, now if I go around the x-axis, this is going to be an integral with respect to y. So I need to draw that rectangle lying down. And I need to solve this curve for x. x is square root of y. My height is the larger x minus the smaller, 4 minus root y. And my radius is just y. And my volume is 2 pi integral. All right, the values of y for which we have those rectangles, they start at 0 and they end up here. And that's when y is 16, because this is x equal 4 here. So that's 16. And then I'm going to distribute 4y minus y to the 3 halves dy. And that's the setup. Okay, and that's the end.